Hey guys, this is Rod from the National Philosopher and I'm here with my good buddy Richard Waits. And what I'm going to talk with you about in this segment is the content of one of my posters called Music 101, Making Music with Guitar Chords and Voice. And it's my opinion that uh, the vast majority of human beings would like to be able to make music and I think most of those people tend to uh, gravitate towards guitar. And I know for myself and a lot of other people that I've spoken with over the years, what a lot of people would like to do is to just play some simple chords and, and sing along and, and have that work and be fun. And that's what the content of this poster is all about. And very soon now, um, it may be a bit uh, after the video actually hits the web, but I will have the content of this poster up for free uh, so you can have a look at it closely on the web. I'm not selling this one yet because I haven't taken it to the press. I do uh, do one-offs, uh, custom jobs every now and then, um, but they're kind of pricey to, to make it worth my while. Um, so let's let's jump into the content here. Um, what you'll find uh, uh, is the gear you need to get started, um, and basically what I recommend for people is is to, uh, uh, to find a guitar that you really like, spend the money. You know, if there's any place that you get what you pay for, it tends to be a musical instrument. And then the other thing to to pick up is uh, a little device called a capo. And this particular style is, is my favorite one. It's real easy on and off. Um, and I'll be showing you how this thing works. So with uh, uh, music theory and, and, and talking about chords and, and et cetera, uh, the whole exercise in my mind is really about getting a bunch of vocabulary straight in your mind. And it's vocabulary uh, that evolved over centuries. Um, there's a lot of uh, contradictory use of terms uh, and so down in the bottom of the picture uh, down of uh, the poster there I give a, a, a real unified treatment of all the musical terms and uh, if you're new to music theory and would like to learn some more I'm gonna have a couple of videos up with my harmonic chord which is a music demonstration instrument that I use to really get down and and show people how music works and, and at that point it just becomes a lot more clear so uh, you can always go and refer to that so with regard to to making music on guitar with your voice one principle to, to uh, that's really helpful um, is what I've got illustrated over here, and I call it uh, the one, four, five chords, a musical gestalt. And the deal with the one, five chords, one, four, five chords in the key. So let's, if we're talking about the, the key of D, for instance, we're talking about the chords D, E, F, G, and A. D, G, and A are the one, four, and five chords uh, in the key of D. And the one, five chord structure, uh, aesthetically in our culture, gives us the sort of completeness that we seem to like uh, in terms of a musical composition. The, those three chords give you enough uh, variation to create and release musical tension, which is one way of talking about you know, how the whole music energy thing works. And the one, four, five, you know, 99% of the music that you hear will be built around the one, four, five chords, whether it's rock music, country music, gospel music, classical music, those four chords tend to be the skeleton, and not just in Western culture, but a, a lot of other places as well. The one, the four, and the five show up everywhere. So, um, let's see. So, the real challenge um, I find, certainly was for me, in learning to, to make some music on guitar is learning chords, because chords are, uh, a for me anyway, we're a fairly complicated thing to, to learn. Um, and if you'll notice that fretting a, the strings of a musical instrument is like nothing else that we do in the course of our daily lives. I mean, playing a piano is a lot like keyboarding or calling somebody on the phone. Playing a drum is a lot like driving a hammer or hitting a baseball or whatever. But there's nothing that really is like fretting a musical instrument and it's a whole new way to to use your body uh, by the way if you're a beginning player and if you're right-handed uh, I'd recommend that you 
uh, experiment with a left-handed guitar. So if you're right-handed, you, you think about playing a left-handed guitar this way and restringing the guitar to accommodate that because I think fretting with the right hand might well be a, a, a much quicker path to the goal. And also playing left-handed always gives you sort of this interesting look when you're playing. So let's talk about some beginning chords. And I have those listed uh, on the poster here, a, a group that I recommend. Um, and a certain order that I recommend uh, people learn them just due to the fact that these chords uh, are going to give, give you access to a whole bunch of different keys, particularly once you, you add the capo into the mix. And the, um, what's helpful about playing different keys is that uh, you can learn to accommodate your voice. Uh, and for instance, you know, a lot of people will buy a Bob Dylan songbook, let's say, and, and play the G, C, and D chords that blowing in the wind or whatever else is um, uh, notated in. And, you know, Dylan wrote that song so that it would work with his voice, and that key may not work with your voice. You may want to play that song in a different key and, and give your voice a break. Um, as the thing to do is to bring the voice to your guitar. Don't try, uh, bring the guitar to your voice. Don't try and take your voice to the guitar because the guitar can play all the keys, but our voices, particularly when we start, are gonna uh, find more ease in certain keys than others. So the first five keys, uh, chords I recommend uh, that you start playing around with are G, C, D, F, and A. And let's, um, uh, so, I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot I can tell you right now um, uh, to help you with that. Um, but if you'll notice on the poster, I've got some uh, variations in the way I indicate chords that um, are different from other, uh, the way other music methods uh, indicate chords. Um, <coughs> and another thing that I've got um, going on here that, that you'll find helpful, I think, uh, in your process of learning chords, I've got a whole bunch of diagrams on the poster here that illustrate how you actually move your fingers and rotate your wrist to to change chords because learning chords is one thing and people will tell you it's like wow once you've learned them learning to change them uh, in the course of the musical stream is another uh, uh, big step that that you'll take so let's look at uh, what the capo is all about and what the capo allows you to do is to uh, change the keys that you're playing in and I'll give you an example my uh, my favorite key um, is uh, built from the D chord shapes and uh, it's not exactly the same chords I use here but it's variations of those and uh, those three chords right there okay but but the open D doesn't really work with my voice I was never able to get it to go there and so uh, I got a capo at one point and started experimenting with it. And what I found is that the chords of the, the key of D um, with the capo right here is where my voice really finds its ease. And the deal is, okay, if we're open um, and we're playing in the key of D, if we put the capo two frets down, which is a whole step, we're now in the key of E. Okay, so chords work essentially just like notes do. Uh, uh, if I move the capo a whole step, I go up a whole step uh, chord-wise. So it's time to finish up this video, and I'll and there will be one more. Okay, thanks a lot.